Hello. This speaker has been recorded at a meeting of Addictive Eaters Anonymous. For more information, visit our website www.aeainfo.org. Thank you, Melanie. My name is Serena. I'm an Addictive Eater. It's lovely to see everyone there this evening. What does it mean? I'm an addictive eater. I'm powerless over food. My life is unmanageable by me, but thanks to this fellowship, a higher power, sponsorship, the 12 steps, I don't need to eat addictively over my life today and I get to enjoy my life, I get to enjoy the people in it. So today, I was at home today and I was a planned and day off but as it happened our little daughter has a, a bit of a tummy bug and just glad to to have the day off and um, to to be around and I was I hope nobody's squeamish but I was wiping vomit off the floor this morning and and I thought for a second I thought my gosh first of all I thought before I did that I thought I think I might just go and wash my teeth and then I thought no just go and do this job but I was reminded of a time before recovery when I had broken a glass on the floor and and I just had to eat before I cleared up that glass. I couldn't do that, I suppose, everyday job, I suppose you'd call it, um, without eating. I just had to have the drug of food. And, and I can give other examples from my life of just ordinary stuff that I that I ate over, posting a letter, opening a bank account, maybe having to do some study, just loads of things. And I just feel hungry. I wouldn't have been able to um, identify that I was maybe worried about something or resentful about something or didn't know how to do something and that would have brought on fear. I would have just felt hungry. And for me, you know, when I'd start to addictively eat, I might have an intention of just having one bun and just having two biscuits. Um, and I just find myself eating much much more than I intended and sometimes I'd eat until the food ran out or sometimes I'd eat until um somebody had come back into the kitchen and as I would see it you know disturb me but I would you know I'd stop doing what I was doing with the food because I wouldn't want anyone to 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 realize that I'd just eaten this volume of food or I was eating at a time that wasn't a dinner time and it's not that I would have been given out to, um, but I just knew it wasn't normal the way I ate and I wasn't proud of it, but I couldn't give it up and didn't want to give it up. Um, I love my food. I just loved it. And I would have liked socializing around food. And, you know, I don't I don't come from a foodie family, you know, and I can remember it's time. So I'd be, you know, maybe out and my my family would be quite happy with yeah, just just a normal a normal meal but I'd yeah I would just have much more interest in food and much more interest in the men and where are we going than, than they would and I was also reminded today with with my daughter being sick I was reminded of being on holidays on on one occasion in particular but another one as well where the person I was traveling with got gastroenteritis and I was just so annoyed in my head probably showed as well I don't know that they wouldn't be able to eat in restaurants they wouldn't be able to eat out they wouldn't be able to eat at all um, because they were sick and that just inconvenienced me because I would have wanted an eating partner and and then they couldn't do that and um, so my eating absolutely took priority over any compassion I might have had for, for the other person and I remember I remember actually that main occasion I'm thinking about I just didn't know what to do for the other person when they were sick and I went over out and I bought different foods for them <laughs> it was probably the, the last thing they wanted but for me it just was like food is the food was the answer to stuff so thankfully thankfully things got bad enough and I wouldn't have thought that was a wouldn't have been grateful for it at the time but over the years my the volume of food that I ate got bigger not not day on day, but year on year. Yeah, obsessed about food, obsessed about weight, obsessed about what I thought she thought of me. And really, really tried hard to manage the effect of the food. I hated um, putting on weight. So, 
you know, trying to control my calorie intake, trying to do a bit of exercise. But I was the kind of person who, you know, I could be drinking Diet Coke and then if you saw me, whatever, a day later, six hours later, I could be in the thick of in the thick of the food. And, you know, I did things like not buy certain foods in, only eat certain foods when I was out. And they were measures that I could try for a while, but I could never stick with them consistently. And I know today it's because they just didn't solve the obsession around the food and the obsession around the weight, which was in my head. Yeah. So then thankfully, when things were bad enough, it coincided with seeing a flyer that said, is food a problem for you? And you just walk by that flyer and think, yeah, it is a problem. It is. And I eventually wrote down the number and made contact with the member of Addictive Eaters Anonymous. And I knew within minutes of talking to her that she just got it. She just got it. And I hadn't, you know, that that was so powerful for me. And it resulted in me meeting a woman who shared her story with me. We call it 12 Step and She just shared what it had been like for her. And although I didn't know this woman, and although she wasn't addictively eating now, um, I believed her story and I believed how bad it had been. And out of that, I started going to meetings and kept hearing about this disease, this disease of addiction. Um, how I'm physically different to other people, I've that mental obsession, you know, when I, you know, mental obsession that this time it'll be okay, it's a Friday, I'm just going to eat one or two, despite what my experience has shown me. And I definitely am an example of somebody who, you know, I, I went to meetings, got great relief out of them, but believed I was an addictive eater, believed I had this disease, but that knowledge did not provide the necessary power to not pick up that first one. So there's the line in our big book, which is textbook that AA have that says self-knowledge availed us nothing. And I'm an example of that, that just because I knew I had this problem didn't give me the necessary power to not pick up the first one. I needed a sponsor. I needed to, to do these steps. Yeah, how are things today? I can live my life without having to eat biscuits and the cakes and there's nothing wrong with those things and if I could do them and eat them and get away with it that's what I'd be doing but but I can't and the miracle of this program and the gift of this program is it doesn't say to me poor you you can't eat this and you can't eat that and I wouldn't have thought that that could be possible and I've been thinking a little bit about step six and step seven today and that's where you know, we ask God to remove our shortcomings or our defects of character. Last night and this morning, I was, yeah, thinking of somebody who, yeah, it was just about, yeah, about paying crash fees and the timing of paying crash fees. And yeah, I felt that she thought I had done something wrong. And, um, you know, I wanted to prove that I was right. I wanted to prove that I was right. And a member was saying to me this morning, because I was still thinking about it this morning, how right I was and how wrong she was. She was saying to me, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? And I was like, I want to be right. <laughs> and I want to be recognised that I'm right. And then I'll be happy, is what my head was saying. So, you know, and that's me, you know, my dependence can be on, I want you to think I'm right so that I'm happy, rather than can I just do the right thing and um, can you let it go? It's no big deal. Can you just do what the woman wants you to do? But I can be so busy trying to prove I'm right that I can I can miss that. Um, and that's and that's just an example of a reason why this fellowship is is absolutely where I need to be because I have a head that will obsess about something, fix on something. Yeah, and just another example was um, when I come up with an idea or make a suggestion here. I want the other person to think that that's a great idea. Of course, of course, we'll do that. And I want them to think that straight away, even though I've been thinking about it for a couple of days. And that's my self-seeking. Yeah, I want you to agree with me so that I'm OK. And I want you to be very enthusiastic about my suggestion so that I'm OK. And um, rather than, can you just make the suggestion, give the person a little bit of time and let's see what, what shows up. Yeah. So the big thing for me is can I can I trust my higher power rather than trusting outside conditions for me to be okay? Yeah. And I get plenty of 
opportunity, to, plenty of opportunity to practice it and, and ask for, for courage and ask for help. Yeah. So hurricanes right now, absolutely flying. I have a place to come with this head. I don't have to addictively eat. Yeah. And I get a chance to let my higher power do for me what I cannot do for myself. So that today I find myself not addictively eating. And sometimes I find myself behaving a little bit better than my head or with a bit of courage that I know is not mine. And if I don't, this program is so generous. It just says to me, just keep coming back, keep coming back, keep sharing. Yeah. So thank you for a place to come. Thanks for listening to me, Dara.